those formalities out of the way to uh, proceed on. And we've got a pretty good crowd here today. And if you're not familiar with kind of the way that uh, we do this, uh, first of all, I will ask for a public comment. Uh, and I'll give you an opportunity uh, to speak on whatever you want. If there happens to be an item of which you would rather wait until that item comes forward to speak, you can pass now, and I'll give you that opportunity at a later time. But as many of them as we can get out of the way, and we'll be glad to, uh, to do that now. So um, most of you have, I guess everybody's filled out uh, these uh, meeting uh, addresses and names. And uh, we'll go through those. And if, some, if I miss someone, just you know, put your hand up or whatever, and I'll, I'll, I'll make it happen. Uh, Paul, since you're up, you can come on right on up to the podium. <laughs> Marty, um, two topics I want to talk about this morning. One is MFLs, and the other is the water supply plan. Uh, on the MFLs, I noticed on your agenda, you're going to be spending quite a bit of money over a million dollars on contracting for MFLs. And in the past, I've urged you to look at the possibility of uh, having some in-house staff that can uh, replace some of that contractor expertise. You have to remember when you're, you're buying a contractor, you're not only buying the expertise of the person that's doing the work for you, you're also paying the overhead for that contractor. And so you're kind of double paying uh, for overhead if you're having that work done. And I think Paul, the only thing I'd like to say about that, I mean, you said that a few, a few times, but, you know, the only thing is, is when that contract's over, that overhead stops. Yeah. When, and if we have somebody in-house, that, in, that it, it doesn't stop. It continues on. And I'm sure you understand that, but we have to we have to weigh what our cost is versus our, you know, what we need long term. Go ahead. And I think that's, that's, that's where you need to really come in and weigh in on this, because that's exactly right. What I'm seeing is that the MFL cost is going to be a long term. It's going to be going on because you have to come back and reevaluate your MFL. So that's the key is to evaluate what that long term cost is going to be for the MFL program and try to reduce that cost where you have those commitments that are going to be going on for, for years. Um, you're right. If you have a short term cost, then it's really cost effective to contract it out. The other issue is the water supply plan. We're coming down to the end of that process. Uh, the goal is, I think, to have a draft out uh, by December. And uh, St. John's Water Management District Governing Board had a uh, briefing on that a couple, uh, I guess, about a month ago. I would urge you to also get to work on that topic. The, uh, I'm really concerned about that because the model that's going to be used to evaluate the project for the water supply plan actually is not going to be finished until I think now the date is August 22nd. And I'm not sure that gives enough time to really evaluate that model and to evaluate the projects uh, that are in the water supply plan to make sure that you meet the uh, legislative requirement that you have enough projects that the people select select from that will meet uh, any shortfall that you have in the uh, MFLs. And then in connection with that, I also, I still am not convinced that uh, the MFL for the other Santa Fe has been met. And again, I think you're going to have to put into the water supply plans and projects that specifically address the upper Santa Fe. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Sue Willard. 